So after years of developing different recipes, I didn't think it was possible to come up with something more velvety than anything I had already created. But then this white cake came along, which is basically a vanilla cake with no egg yolks, which gives it that really nice white color, making it great for birthday and wedding cakes. It is so moist, has a beautiful velvety texture, and is the perfect base to pair with all kinds of fillings and frostings. So to start off, you want to preheat your oven to 160C or 320F with the fan on, also known as convection mode, and grease or line two 8-inch cake tins. As always, I'm using my homemade cake release to grease my tins. It honestly saves so much time. Set these aside for now, and next we're going to sift together our dry ingredients. So I've got 300 grams or 2 and a third cups of all-purpose flour, 25 grams or a quarter cup of cornstarch, also known as corn flour in some countries, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And then you just wanna give that a good mix with either a whisk or a fork until it's well combined. Now, as most of you already know, I use a combination of cornstarch and flour as a cake flour substitute, so you can just use cake flour as a replacement for those two ingredients instead, if you prefer. Okay, now you just wanna set this aside for now, and next in a small bowl, combine 240 grams or one cup of room temperature milk and one teaspoon of white vinegar. Vinegar is great for getting that velvety texture in cakes. So you just want to give that a mix and then set aside for now. Next, we're going to separate the whites and yolks from six large room temperature eggs. So I just like to use my hands to do this because I'm always scared I'm going to crack the yolks when I use the eggshells to do it. Now, don't chuck the egg yolks away, just pop them into an airtight container and put them in the fridge. And you can either use them for a French buttercream, some type of curd, or add them to something you're cooking. Now, once you're done, you should end up with about 225 grams of egg whites. Now, once that's done, just give your hands a little wash and set your egg whites aside for now. And next, in a large bowl, add in 113 grams or half a cup of room temperature unsalted butter, 105 grams or half a cup of unflavored vegetable oil, I use canola oil, and 350 grams or one and three quarter cups of white granulated sugar. And then using a hand or stand mixer on a medium high speed, Cream that together for three minutes until it's light and fluffy. If you do decide to do this in a stand mixer, then you wanna do this with a paddle attachment. Now, next you wanna add in your egg whites in three batches. So just kind of eyeball it, and you wanna make sure each batch is mixed in well before adding in the next. So about 10 to 15 seconds in between each batch of egg whites. And you wanna do this on a low to medium speed, so not too high. Once you're done, you should have a thick, flowy mixture like this. Next, you want to add in two and a half teaspoons of vanilla essence or extract, one teaspoon of almond essence or extract, and half of the milk vinegar mixture from earlier, and then just mix that in until well combined. So for a super white color to your cake, it's best to use clear flavorings, but the clear vanilla flavoring I have, I just don't like it as much as the regular one I use. And for me, flavor is super important, so I just stick to my colored vanilla. Also, if you prefer not to use almond flavoring, then you can just substitute it with vanilla as well. Now you just wanna get all of the batter off of your attachments because we're going to be doing the rest of the mixing by hand. So next, add in half of your pre-mixed dry ingredients from earlier and fold that in with a spatula until just combined. Then add in the remaining milk vinegar mixture and fold that in until just combined. And then add in the remaining dry ingredients and again fold until just combined. You don't want to over mix it, so just fold until there aren't any big lumps or streaks of flour running through the batter. Okay, now that is our batter all done, and now you just want to evenly distribute this into our pre-prepared cake tins. Once done, give your cake tins a light bang on the counter to remove any large air bubbles, and now these are going to go into the oven for 30 minutes, or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cakes are out of the oven now, they have the most gorgeous smell to them. They've been cooling in the cake tins for about 15 minutes, and now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins, and turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. These cake layers are honestly so, so incredibly soft, I cannot wait for you guys to try this recipe. 
Now, while these are cooling, we're gonna go ahead and make a super easy and not too sweet American buttercream. Now, you can use a hand mixer to make this buttercream, but it does require a little bit of mixing, so I'm going with my stand mixer today to save me a bit of an arm workout. So all you have to do is to your bowl add in 340 grams, or one and a half cups of room temperature unsalted butter, 375 grams or three cups of icing sugar, also known as powdered or confectioner sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla, and 120 grams or half a cup of room temperature whipping cream. And you wanna make sure that your cream has a minimum fat percentage of around 34%. And then with the paddle attachment, you just wanna mix that on a low speed until everything is well combined. Once it's combined, give your bowl a scrape down and then turn your mixer up to a medium high speed and whip for a full 10 minutes. Scraping down the bowl every now and then just to make sure everything's mixing well. If your buttercream has a lot of little holes in it and it's not quite as light and creamy as mine, then it's most likely due to one of your ingredients being a tad bit too cold. So you just wanna warm up your buttercream ever so slightly in the microwave, about maybe 10 seconds or so. Give it a little mix and then re-whip it. And then that is basically it. Our wonderfully light, not too sweet American buttercream is all done. So my cakes are cooled down now, and before I start decorating, I'm first going to trim off the little brown bits around my cake layers. This happens because the outer edges of the cake caramelize, and in order to get that wonderful white look to your cake, you want to trim these all off, but this is purely for aesthetic purposes, so you can skip this step if you prefer. Once that's done, I'm placing my first cake layer straight onto my cake stand, and topping it with a generous amount of frosting, and then smoothing that out with my offset spatula. Then my second cake layer goes on top of that, and again I'm just placing some buttercream on the top and then smoothing it out with my offset spatula. Once that's done, I'm also covering the sides with buttercream and then smoothing it out with my cake scraper. Now to get some nice sharp edges on my cake, I'm just bringing that top lip of frosting into the middle of the cake with my offset spatula. Now with my remaining buttercream, I'm just popping it into a piping bag with a 1M tip on it and piping little swirls on the top of my cake. Okay, and that is it. My white cake is all done. This cake is honestly so velvety and moist. It has great flavor and honestly goes so well if you wanted to add, you know, other flavored fillings or frostings as well. Mmm, it's so, so soft. The crumb on this cake is actually insane. It is so velvety and soft and moist. It's just it's so good. And the buttercream is just perfectly sweet. I usually find American buttercreams just a little bit too sweet, which is why you'll notice in many of my American buttercream recipes, I use way less icing sugar than what people usually do. And yeah, this is just perfect for me. So that is it guys. If you do decide to give this recipe a go, then don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content out and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.